Okay, so we have four members present. We can go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the cons consent agenda items, which includes the meeting agenda, last month's minutes, statistics and financial reports. And that includes marches as well as April, because if you'll remember, um, Allison was out and we couldn't get you the financials for March at the April meeting, so you have both. Okay. So everybody can take a moment to look through these if they need to. And if no one does, I will accept the motion to approve. I'll motion. There's second. a motion. There's a second. Everybody put your hand up if we're saying yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, comments from observers. It does not appear we have any observers present. I assume there are none online, Robin. No, there's no one online, and I've received no emails addressed to the board, et cetera. Okay, and uh, then we will move on to comments from friends in the library. Well, the friends of the library are doing well. We had our plant sale over the weekend, and I can't give you dollar figures, but I can tell you it was a success. If you measure things that don't necessarily equate to money, or even if you do, we made money, but we had such a good turnout. It was pouring down rain. <laughs> people were putting up tents in the rain, and then people came and bought plants in the rain. <laughs> and um, I just, it, it, was, it was, to me, it was a good day. And if you watched people who were there, they were so enthusiastic about being able to be there. Um, it, I think it just went off really well. Uh, that's the plan sale. We are, um, I sent out an, uh, sort of an email to um, all of the friends asking, letting them know that one of our board members is retiring and that we're looking for a board member. And I've had three responses. And um, that's the first time we've had responses. Usually we don't get any response. So I was really happy about that. I've talked to three, I've talked to two people from the response and then I was soliciting other people just to see if they were interested. So that seems to be coming along. One of the candidates, as far as I was concerned, was exceptional. So I, don't, I think, I think with my fingers crossed that that's gonna fall into place pretty well. And I think that- Will the new board member be appointed at the June meeting? No, we were hoping for that, but then we realized that's not really necessary. You know, the board is going to be the board ongoing. We will do that probably shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. It was it was a thought, maybe even a serious thought, but then um, we've had, like I said, we've had a couple of different people who show an interest and I think um, if it works out that we do, we do. If not, um, Eileen and I were talking the other day, Eileen's the one who's retiring and she says, um, she says the board's the board no matter what. So, um, we're not putting a heavy emphasis on getting that done. Hmm. No. That's it. Thank you. Next up is comments from Commission Liaison to the Library Board. I do not see our Commission Liaison here. It is election day and she is up for her board seat. Okay. Where she was appointed last October. So um, we've been working on a Brick Streets policy, which I think she talked about last month as well, and um, the municipality is gearing up for summer events. It's going to be interesting having first Friday events uptown and that sort of thing, but they're going to do their best to make it work. So um, I can't think of anything major going on that's interesting to the library board. Well, the historical right uh, district signs were up, or did she cover that last time? She may have, they, they might have been done by that time. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, yeah, they're, they're a green topper on all of the um, well, all signs, of the streets, signs in the historic district, which is a big chunk of all of it. They didn't have enough for every street. I saw something on the municipal website. <laughs> so anyway. Okay, we can move on to the mm -hmm. president's report, which is also my report. 
Um, my big thing is I was able to go to the Mount Lebanon comprehensive plan meeting about two and a half weeks ago and represent the library board at that meeting. Uh, where, where they are currently at in that process is they sent out another survey. It's not sort of like the wide ranging feedback they collected at the beginning, but a more targeted survey as they accrue and compile information to put towards the comprehensive plan. There were, at the time of that meeting, they had 1,300 responses back already from Mount Lebanon residents. If anyone here hasn't taken the survey, survey and wants to, it might still be online at their website, but I'm not sure. But at the time of that meeting, they had 1,300 in. Uh, some things I thought you guys would be interested in. Of those 1,300, 90% of survey respondents had a Mount Lebanon Public Library card. Um, the library ranked third as the most visited Mount destination in that survey to this point. Looks like um, the survey's closed, but we okay. do have a, what we've heard takeaways, summary highlights. There you go. So highest priorities, recreation and park facilities, safe streets, strengthening the business district and the cost of things. There was on the, on the yeah, on the, so we were the third most visited destination in the survey. You're gonna ask me what one and two were and unless Robin could find it, I don't think I quite remember. I think just uptown was like number one, just general uptown businesses. Mm -hmm. And the rec center was mm -hmm. up there. It might've been number two. Mm -hmm. Anyway, if Robin, tell everyone what the URL for this is in case anyone- Sorry, it's ascendlebo.com, okay. A-S-C-E-N-D-L-E-B-O.com. So, um, they presented us, I think they did two separate meetings. They split up the group, pretty much all the boards had a representative there. My meeting, I think there were, there were two people from the group that's putting together the, the comprehensive plan and then about six people representing different facets of Mount Lebanon. And they went over the survey and then we talked about, there's a big push to have more uptown events and more dynamic uptown events. Once all the constructions were done, that got a lot of talk. Um, there was some talk about the South Parking Garage, which I didn't know. I guess the, this may or may not actually be included as part of the plan, but that that the South Parking Garage uptown has a very limited lifespan left. It's in a couple of years, it is no longer going to meet code, and they're going to have to decide what to do it with it. And from my understanding, they don't think they need that entire property down that's built into the hill for parking anymore. And they could potentially re do the whole thing and turn it to whatever they want to turn it into, Poss possibly have parking, have something else. I don't I don't know, but that's something that's going to be talked about. <coughs> and yeah, there was a lot of talk about sidewalks and paths and public transit. And <coughs> all that stuff should continue to be updated on the website. Um, personally, I, I think I'll be going to one more of these meetings. Does this sound right, Robin? You, might, you may or may not. Yeah, know. there were only there were only yeah. going to be a handfful. Of yeah, I think there's focus going to be, groups. We have one more group of meeting where they kind of do yeah small focus groups with various representatives and not Lebanon. So hopefully that works out, and I can hit up one more. Um, the only other th thing I was going to add to the president's report, and she's not here, but I was just going to thank Holiday for coming and helping us set up for the plan mm -hmm. panel on Saturday. So say it for the video recording so it's on the record. And that is all I had. On to you, Robin. Okay. Um, I will also try to keep it brief. Um, as I'm sure you noticed, the lockers that were scheduled to be put in today were not put in today because we received an email yesterday from the company saying that they don't actually have a unit for us, although we paid for it. So we figured they oversold they they had they had a bunch of them left over from the COVID days when everybody was doing remote pickups from Amazon and things like that um, from different grocery stores and things. So we think they had a glut left over and oversold what they have. So we're waiting on the unit. Everything else is in place. It is ready to go. The um, electricity and the um, the internet cable, whatever the fancy word for that is, is is Ethernet, yeah. Yeah, has been um, routed there. The site is ready. Public Works is ready to to assist. 
So as soon as it does come in, it will be installed. We just have no idea when that will be, but I'll keep you posted. Um, it was pretty disappointing because we were really excited and looking forward to it. So June is gonna be a busy month at the library as always. We're gonna have our raffle baskets in conjunction with the, um, that we always have in conjunction with the garden tour. And um, Marina said she could use a couple more gift cards. She wanted to thank Holiday for not only donating money, but also donating a gift card. So um, again, she's not here to, to do that, but um, if, if any of you can get gift cards from a local business, um, have them donated, that would be great. Do we know what we already have so that Marina will know? I don't, okay. I don't know the details. She knows okay. everything. I'll ask for any. Yeah. Um, Summer reading starts June 12th. Please sign up. Please register, even if you've never set foot in the library. After that, just register so we can see all the board members are registered for summer reading. And if you can help with signups that first day from 11 to 5, it's a great way to um, meet people, meet the patrons. I have new name tags for all board members. They don't have your actual names on, it just says board member. So you can wear. Um, let's see. We, the library will be attending a lot of summer events with our book, bike, and cart that the friends graciously provided for us last year. So um, anytime you see the book, bike, and cart anywhere, please come up and say hi to the staff. It's gonna be me a lot of the time, but not always. Uh, let's see. Um, and also on June 12th, the new library catalog will launch. So I can show you the public um, pilot. If you go to the library's webpage, click on catalog. This is our current catalog, but you can check if you click on that, you'll check out the new catalog. So it's um, one of the big different things about this is there are a bunch of book lists that the library staff from all over the county can include. And the books, that's a really good book. I love that book. Um, the books actually are rated and ranked like on Amazon and you can read reviews of people from all over the country. Basically any library system that has this catalog, um, it allows people to, to add reviews. So you can add your own review. Is this CLP or INAC that's running this? It's, it's the EI network. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're just replacing our old catalog. Okay. So it's all the libraries in the county. Um, this library of things are just mm. the things that are non traditional library items. So, like um, the Homestead Library rents out tables. So, if you're having a you know backyard wedding and you need tables and you want to pay for them, you can check them out at the library. Our library has these experience kits. So if you want to go to, you know, the um, one of the local mattress factory, you can check it out. So there, there are lots of things to discover, but basically they just want everybody to play around with the catalog. And if you have any comments about problems you have or anything like that, let me know. Um, and other than that, you'll have seen my written my written report, which is included in the consent agenda, or included in your packet rather, and just all of the things that that are going on. Our big event in April was, of course, Folsom Whitehead, which, if you were able to attend, was a full house and incredibly well received. We met with some of the high school kids beforehand, and it was just a, a really good time. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Robin. We will move to the committee reports. Fundraising is up first. Now, I know Anthony sent out this email. Did everyone see his email and the note? Do you want to read it? I can read it. I pulled it up. I will read it. Anthony writes, the volunteer list for the garden tour remains at about half of what is needed. At this point, every slot that is filled includes two people, and I don't want to cut that to one in order to ensure that every time slot is filled. 
Um, I think what he means is they have enough to put one person for each time slot, but ideally they'd want to have two. A lot of the people like to volunteer yeah. together too, because um, they then go around together to the police. Please continue to encourage your friends to sign up. Remind them of the benefits of 90 minute shift that also includes a free ticket to see all of the other gardens that day. Anyone who's interested should email Anthony Moretti and he has his email address. So that was Anthony's note. Monica, do you know if there are any other dates past that? Um, no, we did not meet. Okay. Um, I have these from Marina. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just um, a request to be a donor, patron, benefactor. We've been receiving a lot of, at least I've been signing a lot of benefactor letters, um, people that have contributed at the $250 level, which is really nice because we're not getting as many program ads as we used to. So having the additional donations is nice. So if you're, if you're able, we, we really appreciate it when the board contributes. Okay, any, uh, one thing I did want to ask is, so we are doing a board of trustees basket for the garden tour, correct? Yes. And who's in charge of putting that together this year? I don't recall. Okay, I'll ask. With the, the board basket? Yeah. Right, have you guys started on that or? Um, is that also Marina? No, that's not the, I mean, if, I, I I don't remember where the board left the basket. I know we talked about everyone contributing something. I know it was garden themed, and I know we talked about everybody contributing something, either a gift card or an item. And I, my wife and I are definitely going to contribute something okay. to that basket. I just wasn't sure who to coordinate I, it with. I thought that she was okay. So from the April meeting, I have a note. Please ask the board members to donate items to create our garden lovers. Raffle basket. I have several books and a basket prepared, okay. but we'll need gardening tools, seeds, gift cards to garden centers, et cetera. And that's Marina? Yes. Okay. I'll just email her and ask her what she still needs. And if anybody wants to donate that basket, I would say email Marina, ask her specifically what she needs or wants to make it look yeah. great. And I think that's probably when she asked me to ask you for gift cards and things, that's probably what she meant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. like rollers or, you know, okay. Jenkins, whatever. Um, is that it for fundraising? I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. Governance committee. Oh, you, Mary. <laughs> okay. So just um, I have pronouns of everything you're going to talk about. So I'll give those to you, Mary. Okay. And then which looks like this is also under new business now, correct? Yeah. So, so you might just want to summarize right now and then jump to. Okay. So the, the governance committee met at the beginning of this month. I apologize. I don't remember the exact day, um, but it was. Thank you, Mather, uh, Kristen, and Bob, myself, and Robin, and we went over um, very quickly, just to recap for Kristen, who is new to our committee, the three um, meeting, our three policies we had already uh, set, ready for a vote to our to pass out tonight so that you all could vote on it in July, and then we still continue to work on the unattended child policy. Uh, we have one more in the work, which is the patron behavior policy, but until we got the unattended children's policy down, we can't exactly move forward on that one. Um, so for your um, I'm trying to do this alphabetically. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So for you all to take with you this evening, we have uh, copies of the existing policy, the red line items that were changed, and then the what we want the policy to actually become. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll get those to the people who are not here tonight to look at. So everything, I added everything to Govenda. If okay. you go to the left, there's a documents which mm -hmm. we rarely ever use, but I added a folder called proposed policy updates. So all of them are in there. Um, the original policies are on our website. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see library policies and there's a list. So I didn't print all of these out again, but if you want to see the current meeting room policy, it's available right there. And the meeting room policy here, I, we have two versions. We've got the red line version, which is the changes we've made from the, the current. And then we have the clean version because it's so many pages long. 
this is just what the final should look like. The others are one page. So all I we just printed out the red line version, but you can easily see, you know, on hours of open, if you look at the hours of opening policy, what has changed. So so public so public notice hours of opening and attendant children, these are I mean, okay, I see. These are basically the final version showing you what's new and showing what's being deleted. Yes, yes. And the meeting room policy, what's the difference with this one? No it's, it's just Same so thing. long that it's oh, impossible okay. to do a red line version and really understand what you're doing. Okay. So those are all for you. Should I ask these over? Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Susan, if you want one, we have I have plenty, but I Susan, you want some or you <laughs> <laughs> a little light reading for tonight. We don't have to make any decisions tonight. Mm -mm. Um, we are proposing these to vote on in July because we don't meet in June. Does everybody have one? Yeah, we do. So basically, Monica, you're the only one here that's not on the government. <laughs> <laughs> so what you want to do is in the next four weeks, read through them, see if you have any concerns, questions, eight recommendations. Weeks. Yeah, yeah, eight weeks. Eight, eight weeks. weeks. We don't eight need weeks. You have eight weeks. Um, these have already been pretty thoroughly vetted by Robin staff and the government's committee, but that doesn't mean that. I mean, the full board when we did this last year had questions and concerns and we made further adjustments. Yeah, I will also be running these by legal counsel, yeah. especially the unattended child policy. So that has sure not that happened yet still? It has not happened, okay. but it will. So our, I think the one that was the most controversial of this group is the unattended child mm -hmm. policy, simply because we were trying to figure out at what age do we feel comfortable um, with children being left on their own, plus also potentially being responsible for younger children. So it's definitely the one we did the most work on. Yes. Have and there been issues? Well, with the elementary school and the middle school here, you know, okay. said middle school child who might be in sixth grade, parents are assuming is going to be looking after said younger siblings, and that may or may not be happening. So we, we feel that it's a lot of a burden on the staff to have to try to corral. Um, it's am, I, am, I, am I saying yeah, that's the it's same? It's not thing? necessarily gonna change the behavior of the patrons. I mean, the kids that are coming in are probably still gonna be coming in no matter what their age is. They're not reading the policy, no. obviously, but um, it, it just helps us in case of a problem. Yeah, if there's a problem, we can then say, here's the policy that the board agreed on that we looked into. And so that kind of gives them some. And this leverage. is really good timing because I send a letter to all of the parents at the beginning of each school year. And I um, reference these policies and tell them to read the policy. So even if they never do, we've told we've made them aware that the policies exist. Yeah. So <clears throat> there are four policies. I'm sorry, I, I had that there yes. were three. Yes, there are there's unattended, unattended children policy, the public notice bullet board policy, the meeting room policy, and hours of both things. And we have one more that we're working on, but that won't be ready for anything probably till the fall. It's a tremendous amount of work for the governance committee to have done. So I really appreciate all of your help in this. Of course. Can, do we discuss this tonight or do we discuss this? It would be more next time, but we also hope to vote and approve next time. So but I, if, yeah, I mean, if we can't approve, if, if the discussion, you know, needs more discussion yeah then if we, we determine it needs more to, then we'll um go back to the drawing board and hopefully reintroduce in september to vote in november okay. and i don't know robin if this would be your job my job marriage job but can someone can you maybe send out an email to the full board for the people who aren't here saying Absolutely, hey we're yes. doing this please go to the, the website Govenda, yeah. what's it called I, Govenda, yeah. yeah please go to Govenda and download these forms to be prepared to speak about them if that email could go out from the full board I think it would be helpful absolutely my only suggestion that just quickly yeah. um, is what does the temporary care mean like you know I mean, so I put we put definitions up at the top you did in the no, that's okay. There it is, two hours or less. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.
There's, Thank you for giving me a question I could easily answer. <laughs> Again, it's it's uh, it's unrealistic to assume that this would be strictly enforced, but it does give Robin and her staff something to fall back on if there are problems. And we spent a lot of work just trying to identify age ranges, right? And who, <laughs> who, we, who we want to allow to have just unfettered, unsupervised access to the library from a child perspective. We talked to the rec center and um, their policies basically 10 and up, they're allowed to be there unsupervised. <laughs> so ours are basically, I, I mean, you'll be able to read this, but in short, if you're at least in middle school, you're okay to be here. If you're in elementary school, you're okay to be here, but you need a sibling with you. If you're younger than elementary school, you cannot be here without someone who's at least 16 years old. So we're talking a an adult, a parent, a babysitter who's, you know. And that also gives some protection to those kids who have lots of siblings who mom and dad think, oh, let's just send everybody to the library. And, uh, you know, that doesn't help. We've had things in the past, like yeah. homeschool families where the kids would just come and stay all day during the summer or, you know, we do have um, a child now who's younger in primary school and um, she has an older brother, but he, you know, runs around with his friends and sometimes he's here when she's here and sometimes he's not. So it's a little concerning for us sometimes because we don't have time to be responsible for her care. Yeah, for like a logistic point of view, for like staff training, um, is there sort of like a quick reference for them? Or I guess you probably train them. Yeah, we make them aware of where all the policies are. And then, you know, once these are officially adopted by the board, I will make sure to let them know about all the changes and how it affects us. Okay. Like I said, it's not so much a matter of telling every young looking child that comes in the door, they need to be here with a parent, but just if something happens. Yeah, I'm sure it's staff it's guidelines for when to call CYS. When to exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, everybody's a mandated reporter anyway, and they yes. have to go through training for that. Every, every library employee for Allegheny County. Is that true of academic librarians as well, or just public librarians? Um, we, we it wasn't a requirement in Ohio, so I wasn't sure. It's true for us because we are a state system, like we're we're state employees, so, right? So it is, but I don't think for like private schools. Gotcha. Uh, I I didn't have to do it when I worked in the Pitt Library at the law school. I was not. So, yeah, yeah it, and it kind of depends on the library, like yeah. how open you're like our yeah. because we're a state school, so our libraries has to be open to the taxpayers. Yeah. So yeah, people can come in. Um, but yeah, if, if your library is closed, we yeah. like two just law students. Yeah. Or well, law yeah. school is like a that would be like a special library almost, right? Yeah. Prob. I mean, Pitt, both Pitt and University of Maryland were federal depository libraries, mm -hmm. so theoretically, you're open to the public. But you don't get a lot of ten year olds running in there. No, <laughs> no, older people with not insignificant issues. But yeah, not a lot of not a lot of. Kids. That is another change we made to this unattended child policy. We just added um, in the near the end that um, vulnerable adults that are left without yeah. a caregiver. That will yeah, stay closed. after after the library is closed. We'll yeah. stay with them the way we would um, a child, a, a minor, yeah, until someone can be responsible for them. So, so again, I think I'm just reiterating what Mary said. But the plan is to for everyone to read through these. We're going to discuss them and vote on them at our next meeting in two months, and then we should have at least one more policy to go through later in the year. Yes. Nothing else from the government, correct? Yeah. Uh, old business, I see nothing here. Is that correct, Robin? New business, I believe that's what we just did. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Works for Is me. there any other new business not on the agenda we need to introduce? Nothing Anyone? I can think of. All right. We're flying along. We can go on to our advocacy moment. <laughs> we can start with Kristen. And again, I think you saw this done last time. Kristen, but feel free to talk about anything you watched. Um, Red, watch Red, listen to. Well, 
Well, we watched The Diplomat, which I highly recommend. It's on Netflix. I don't know if I said that last time, but it was Carrie Russell, and it was really good. Oh, if you're repeating your advocacy, yeah. we're going to come down on you hard. Okay. So you've got to bring fresh stuff. Um, <laughs> don't listen to him. Don't listen. I'm also trying to watch the worst television show ever made called The Outer Banks because my 14 year old nieces watch it. And now I know how my parents must have felt when I watched 90210. Um, <laughs> Sounds like a teen drama. Oh my God. Teenagers running from the law for like 17 straight hours. It's, it's a real ride and it gives me a lot of stress. Um, <laughs> but I just read um, Romantic Comedy. I think that's what was with Curtis Sittenfeld who is a hit or miss for me, but this one was a hit. Um, some people didn't like that she goes into COVID times, but it wasn't, to me, it was just, it wasn't like the COVID trauma was just sort of emailing during COVID. Um, and I thought it was a delight. I also went to the book festival this weekend, which I felt really bad because the weather definitely, there's a large outdoor component to it. Um, but it was so fun. I made my husband come to the romance panel <laughs> with me, which we also, everyone in the room thought was hilarious because it was at the theological seminary <laughs> and they had the romance panel in the chapel. So it was like all these romance panelists in the big cross hanging behind them, which was just very, I thought, hilarious. But it was great. I totally fangirl out over the author. So I highly recommend going next year. It was really, really nice. That's awesome. I'm so yeah. happy you went. So who was running this book festival? Because there's so many. Um it was just it was the Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Okay. It was the Pittsburgh. I don't remember if it was Festival of the Book or Book Festival, but there were a lot of um food vendors, oh, nice. a ton of um like tents. Like I said, it was like pouring down was rain. Lawrenceville? It was I would say East Liberty, which is a made up <laughs> place, um, but yeah, <laughs> we came in bomb, I don't know, but it was, it was, it was wonderful, except they did not have air conditioning on, and as I always say, do not gather a group of middle-aged women in the place and not turn <laughs> on the air conditioning. Catastrophic mistake. It really was, but it, I, I really highly, highly recommend it. So it was, it was a very nice. And my mom loved her plant from other side. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So that's wonderful. <laughs> that was it. It was nice to see you there. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you looked like you were having fun. So I brought my book. <clears throat> I, um, it's a mosquito bowl. It's um my buzz this year, really. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like um a good you know the too. orange bowls and the whatever other kind of football bowls. So this yeah. takes place. It's real, it's true. In World War II, um the young soldiers who were stationed in Guadalcanal and going to fight, I guess, at Okinawa is next. Um, <clears throat> but they're all just very young and so the boy, the man who wrote it was the son of one of the soldiers who was there and they um <clears throat> the conditions are horrible but they, these kids played football at school so there were 15 of them that were on, who played football but many many people died there for <clears throat> sure but these 15 were, were kids that had played football and he wrote about their story where they had gone to school, mm -hmm. but what they were like as young men, what their families were like. So I'm, I, I was at the, um, the volunteer appreciation event and one of the people sitting at the table was talking about, she had read it. And um, it's, it's, a, it's going, I'm only like, I'm just on the second soldier. It's going to be a really good book because he's he's writing about his own dad from what he thought he knew and, and remembered, and then learning about all these other young men and their families and 
you know, the one kid who, they all play football, but the one kid's dad had been a football coach at school. It's just really an intimate look at them. And I'm guessing Mosquito Bowl, there must have been one heck of a lot of mosquitoes <laughs> also over there. So um, the guy who wrote it is Bob Buzz Bissinger, and he also wrote Friday Night Lights, which I think everybody's heard of, plus other things. But um, on reading that, and I'm listening to Little Fires Everywhere, so I've got kind of two different things going on. <clears throat> so that's that. Um, I am uh, just finished the British Post War Science Fiction class that I was taking. So uh, our last novel was A River Called Time by um, Portia Newland. Uh, and then after that, I've just been reading kids' books to my son. I've taken a real mental break for myself. Um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of heavy sci-fi for a while there. Um, so that, that's been nice to um, We had uh, two books today. Um, I don't remember the titles of either of them. Picture books. Oh. No, he um, he's really gotten into he's three. He's really gotten into graphic novels. This is so like, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's difficult as a mom of a three-year-old because they're not written for three-year-olds, <laughs> and like they're written for teenagers. And so like finding we do have like, a section of easy uh, graphic novels up in children's. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna look for those. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Baby novels. Um, I did just order a couple books, so maybe next time I'll, I can talk about some stuff I'm reading, but they haven't arrived yet. Um, watching, I, I either had to watch things way early or I just watched them way late. So the early one was I had to review Muppets Mayhem for the website I worked for. So all my family got to watch like, like just binge six hours of Muppets with me last weekend. And I think it launched this past Wednesday on Disney Plus. So that was a huge time suck one Saturday. And then late, like I missed things. It's like, all right, I'm not going to worry about this. I'll do it whenever. So like a year after it came out, I finally started watching season three of Atlanta, Donald Glover's show, which is on FX and Hulu, which is fantastic. I should have taken me this long. The show ended after season four. So I have two seasons to wrap up, oh, two, two seasons to watch before I finished it. But now I'm kicking myself. I'm like three episodes in. I'm like, why didn't I watch this when it first came on? Because it's amazing. And uh, other than that, this sounds like something you would do, Robin. But I'm like on a B action movie kick. Absolutely. Like I got you know who Scott Adkins is. I got to interview Scott Adkins for work. He's like a B action kung fu star guy who's in the latest John Wick, which is like his biggest role. Like is the, the most people have seen him. And I got to talk to him, so I had to watch like I watched three or four. I'd seen a couple, but I watched like three or four more of his movies to prepare for that interview. And it got me thinking about B action movie guys. And Frank Grillo is another one of those guys. I think most people know him. He's a villain in a couple of the Captain America movies, but he's like for people that like low budget action movies, he's like stars <laughs> and all. And so I'm on a big Frank Grillo kick right now. I love I love things like that. <laughs> you know. So mostly I've just been flipping through uh, travel guides because we go on our trip next week and um, really still enjoying Will Trent. So someday I hope to read the books. I just someday. I've, I've started Will Trent too. It is real. I can't watch it before bed though because it's a little scary. So what is it? Will Trent, it's, um, oh God, I can't think of who it is. Who wrote? It's a mystery series. It's set in Atlanta and I can't think of who it's book based. Um, I can't think of the authors, but he's a, um, he grew up in the foster system and he's sort of dating and got this on again, off again relationship with another former foster kid. He's um, GBI, so he's Georgia Bureau of Investigation and she's an Atlanta cop. So um, there's kind of like a longer term mystery and then you have like episodic just you know this is what's going on and they solve a crime in this episode and then the next episode something completely different also he can't read yeah he can't read he's dyslexic wow so he records everything but it's made him so his mentor um and i don't want to spoil it yeah 
but his mentor uh, has been kind of um, guiding him to become and overcome that dyslexia. So to become extremely observant and to train other people how to be that observant. So he's always talking into a, a cassette recorder and, and that way he's able to, um, you know, be a little more observant than just, oh, I just, you know, yeah, here and assume because he'll he'll come in and see something that nobody else has paid attention to. And like, oh, the it. bloody footprints going the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, wrong way. Or there's only the <laughs> one, yeah. And there's two pairs of shoes at yeah. the front door. And then somebody broke in through the front window, but it's way too high yeah. and the door handle's down here. So how did they get it? You know, yeah, it's very clever. It is. I can't, very I can't. Very clever. Karen Slot. Yeah. I think it's who it is. Yeah, I'm almost positive that's who this is. I know it would have come to me. So anyway, I, I'm... Sorry that the season has ended, hoping it will pick up for another one. But that, that's it. Your turn. You're up. Okay. Um, besides my usual one, which mm -hmm. I don't talk about. Um, <laughs> I might change that role too. You might have to talk about well, it. Kristen is starting to, you know, inspire me <laughs> to just own it. Yeah, I never talk about the ones I read either. So, yeah. Well, honestly, I don't remember like the titles, the authors. Yeah, they just all run together. Yeah, they're, they're all, all the same. And <laughs> Moly. Anyway, um, I'm reading Bell Canto by Ann mm -hmm. Hatchett. Hatchett. That is, the premise was so weird that I had to pick it up. So it is about a Japanese businessman who absolutely loves opera. So some people in one of the South American countries want him to like invest in their country and build a something there so they throw him a birthday party and they invite his favorite opera singer to the party and at the party a band of gorillas g-u-e gorillas break in <laughs> and um want to kidnap the president of the country who isn't there it's at the vice president's house the president decided to stay home and watch his favorite soap opera so he didn't come to the party so the gorillas take all these people hostage including this opera singer so I haven't gotten much further than that. Um, they've just released all of the, the women except for the opera singer. So, um, and they're starting some Stockholm syndrome. I think they're starting to like befriend the kid, the gorillas, which are mostly a bunch of like teenage kids and things like that. So it's definitely not my usual, put it that way. I am also still listening to the um, Rivers of London kind of a sci-fi detective series. I know the third one right now. And as for movies this weekend, Lewis and I every once in a while will put something on the big screen upstairs. We have a projector and you know surround sound system. And um, he wanted to watch The Fly with Jeff Goldblum, which is a movie I just really don't like at all. I admire the special effects, which are just as gross today as they were in the 80s. <laughs> I just really don't like that movie and I don't know why, but we watched it. So he was happy. It's, it's I, I recognize its quality. I just don't like it. Like it's just so gross. It's so gross. Okay. Thank you everyone for sharing. Did anyone else <laughs> they wanted to bring up on the record before I adjourn? Then adjourn I shall do. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Okay, and I will stop recording.